I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Mo Jabri, or better known in Dubai as Mo Money. Getting back on my blogging game. Yeah. Before Mo Money, before my influencer started. Play, yeah, and we're, we're going to go into I that. I had 300 followers. Yeah. 200. And they were all my friends. Fools? Yeah. I'm all good. I'm passing on this one. Hard pets. Attitude cannot be unlearned. <laughs> Get knocked down. But I get up again. You ain't never gonna keep me down. These are questions I've never been asked before, actually, in interviews. Ever met a stranger and immediately like them? Ever been in an event and suddenly someone walks into the room and completely lights the room up? Ever felt down or angry, met with a friend, and within a couple of minutes, they changed your energy? That, my friend, is the critical and overlooked factor that's known as likability. Today's guest is here for that reason. Born and raised in Houston, Texas, he worked at a petrol station when he was 8, 9, and 10 years of age. By the time he was a teenager, he held down three jobs. So much was his desire to hustle and make a mark for himself. Today, he lives in Dubai, He's seen playing with elephants, cheetahs, and tigers, rolling in a Rolls Royce, Lamborghini, and a Ferrari are just perks of the job. And he has a network of influencers, celebrities, billionaires, and royalty on speed dial. I have him here today on the show, not to share with you about the bling bling of Dubai. I have him here today on the show to talk about likability amongst a few other success factors. Please realize that often it's the simple answers that will get you significant results. This is How Do They Do It? I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Mo Jabri, or better known in Dubai as Mo Money. Mo, welcome. My oh, man. I appreciate you being How here, you doing, brother. How you Thanks done? for having me. You good? All good, all good. So if you remember when we got on the phone, I said, Mo, I was thinking about likability. Okay. And the first couple of people that came to mind, if not the first person, was you. My guy. Yes, I was like, I'd love to have you on. I'd love to... Um, you to share with the audience some tips, thoughts, and strategies. I don't know, do you realize that you have the superpower? I mean, I wouldn't call it a superpower, obviously. Uh, practice makes perfect. Right. I didn't know I had it until you just told me. I mean, you told me I'm likable. Thank you, bro. 100% Appreciate likable. It, 100%, 100%. When it comes to likability, let's say someone says, you know what, I've realized I'm actually not a likable person, um, or I don't have that skill, but I would like to gain that skill. What tips would you give someone to become more likable? I mean, it's not necessarily one thing you can do to become more likable. Okay. Like, it's not something that I went and studied and said, hey, okay, all right, one, two, three, this is how I'm going to, somebody's going to like me. Well, that rhymed. Uh, number, rule number one, rhyme when you speak. No, I'm joking. Um, I would say, honestly, just be yourself. I mean, it's very simple. You just got to be yourself. Even if you don't feel like you're likable, you just need to be yourself because if you're trying to be somebody else, right, then you're not going to be likable because that's not who you really are. Right. But there are traits or there are elements that you can learn. Right. So let's say, for example, if myself, my natural state, uh, growing up, my natural state was like this. Okay. It, had, it was this constipated look. That's just the reality of it. And, you know, I've had, I had many people at that point saying, hey, are you okay? Why are you having a bad like day? Yeah. Or are you angry? No, I'm not angry. Well. Why, Why don't you inform your face about it? So sometimes it's as simple as putting a smile on your face, right? Because any face looks better yeah. with a smile. Yeah. Um, so my, I guess my question to you is, did you, were you always like this? Uh, was it something you developed? Was it something you realized as you grew up? Honestly, I wasn't always such a happy and, and you know, up, uppity guy, mm -hmm. but it was like, again, practice makes perfect. I realized as growing up, all right, if I'm always in a down mood or if I'm bored or if I'm whatever, I don't want to have to show that I'm to the people that I'm bored or just pissed off or yeah. anything. Always just try to give energy because giving energy, good energy brings good energy back. So it's all about giving good energy. So like if you're saying somebody's always frowning, you just got to take a look at yourself. And if you look like you're pissed off, people are going to be pissed off at you. That's right. So you, you, you basically you receive what you give. Yes. You give what you receive. Well said. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you just gotta give that good vibe out, man. It's all about vibing with people. Uh, for example, I remember you told me a long time ago how you started your first business. Mm -hmm. 
it was just by meeting somebody in an elevator. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. That's that right. was what six years ago. You told uh, me this. some time ago. Yes. Yeah? yeah. And this was not rehearsed. I didn't even tell him this before. Yes, that's right. And yeah. you said, I literally just met the guy and I just said hello. That's right. So it's all about just just going that one extra step, saying, "Hey, how are you today?" You know, putting a smile on somebody's face. Yeah. And you never know what comes up. You could start a, a business, and this is what you did. You know, that's um, that was another thing when we met up, or when I, I remember. I think the first time I met you was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, at a gym. And um, I was like, this guy, one, you know, he's is likable, but he's got another trait, and that is he's he's cool with talking to strangers. Yeah, that's another thing. You just got to be open. You just whether it's an elevator, whether it's in a gym, you never know who you meet. But there will be a lot of people that will say, hey, it's uncomfortable, man. Exactly. Uncomfortable is what opens up things for you. You know what I mean? If you're always in your comfort zone, then you're always going to be doing the same crap over and over again. Mm -hmm. Open up, do things that make you uncomfortable, do things that are out of the ordinary, and that might just change your mood. That might, if you're going to keep doing what you always do and say, oh, I'm uncomfortable, I'm, I'm I'm not uh, motivated. Okay, well then, if you keep doing what you're gonna always done, mm -hmm. you're gonna continue to feel how you feel. Absolutely. Step out mm -hmm. of the box, step out of your comfort zone, and things might just change. Mm -hmm. You know, they did a study, um, there was a study done some time ago, and they got a couple of, uh, they, they got, they had two groups, two groups of commuters. So, you know, public transport commuters, and they told one group, uh, to whatever public transport you take, make sure you commute from home to work. Every single one of you is supposed to strike up a conversation with a stranger. Then they took, uh, they asked the second group, do as you normally do and do not speak to anyone. Okay. Right? And then they had these guys go through the experiment. What happened? And the interesting aspect of it was, you can imagine, asking someone to speak to a stranger or that group that had to speak to a, to a stranger, they would have felt uncomfortable. It was like, you know, I don't want to do this. I'm not sure. All that kind of negative feeling that's associated with why would I want to strike up a conversation? How do I strike up a conversation? What do I say? So you'd have those feelings. But when they did that test, what they found was the group that actually struck up a conversation with strangers, they had a better experience of course. throughout their journey compared to the group that just sat there Bored. and didn't do anything. I have met a lot of great people just randomly saying, here's the secret. It was just simple. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? Because people in the elevator, what do they do? They're like head down, head up. Pissed off. Pissed just... off, or they're just going, I just can't wait to get out of here. And when you're living in Dubai, most, most buildings are like 40, 60, or 70 floors. So you're gonna be in the elevator for some time. Minute, two, three minutes. Yeah. You, you know, people are feeling awkward. But I can just imagine, guaranteed, if someone is in the elevator, you'll probably say hello. Every time? Yeah. Yeah, I'm never awkward. Hey, how you doing? You all right? And then, first of all, they're just like, was this guy talking to me? Yeah. They're not used to people talking to That's me. That's true. And then they're like, yeah, I'm actually great. Thank you. I'm like, good to hear. Have a good day. Whether it starts something or not, it's not about, oh, let me meet, say hello to this person because something's going to happen. Yes. No, it just puts a smile on somebody's face, makes you feel happy. That's right. It makes you happy so so makes them feel good makes you feel good why not and you potentially have now a new friend or a new contact and then you never know you might see this person a year from now and this guy might be a, a millionaire that wants to start a business and say oh this guy i'm not saying that you're saying hi because of that sure. reason just saying you never know oh this guy this guy said hello to me in the elevator this guy, this guy seems like a good guy let me bring him let me bring him in maybe he can join my business just like you you remember the guy you started the business with why did he why did he start the business with you? That's right. You felt your vibe, you felt your energy, you guys connected. Oh. Get inspired. Whether you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, the last thing you want to do is blow your budget on accommodation, which is why I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. Beyond being price sensitive, what I love about Rove Hotels is the fact that they are a combination of cafe, culture, and just coolness. Even my guests, many of them, when they arrive before we record or after we finish recording the podcast, they actually comment. They go, wow, this place is cool. The vibe is amazing. And it is amazing. So if you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. This episode is brought to you by M Dojo. Whether you're in business or new to business, you need three things. A good website traffic 
and being able to convert that traffic into paying customers. That's what MDojo does best. They're able to create for you a functional state-of-the-art website, drive targeted traffic and put in all the elements needed in order to convert that into paying customers. Isn't that what you want? Of course it is. Give the team at MDojo a call and see how they can help you increase your sales and profits. Tell them I sent you. Their website, mdojo.co. Before Mo Money, before my influencer started. Yeah, and we're, we're going to go into I, I that. I had 300 followers. Yeah. 200. And they were all my friends. <laughs> See, this is real talk, man. Real talk. Today, I mean, when you, when you look at his social media, he was just showing me his TikTok account. A video he just posted just got like 10,000 views. Now, to me, that's a lot. Um, but, you know, T today it's a different world, but we're gonna get to that. But you know, everyone starts from humble beginnings. We all start at zero. You take that in. Um, so likability, uh, strike up a conversation. So some tips: strike. smile. What you said? Smile. Always. Smile. Give energy. Always good vibes. Um, connect with strangers. Say hello. It's not hard. Just say hello. Just one word. Yeah. Hello. Hey. With a <laughs> smile. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't want to be like grumpy. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what else? And any other tips? Um vibes, smiles, strike up a conversation. You know what if someone says, oh Mo, but you know, you come across as an extrovert, you know, because people say that to me. I'm a public speaking coach, so I work True. with CEOs and world leaders. I teach them this concept of likability because I tell them, hey, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you are, and it doesn't matter what you do. Before your ability comes likability. Of course. Right? I'll say it again. Before your ability comes likability because it doesn't matter how good you are or what you can offer. If I don't like you, it's not happening. I'm not buying from you no Ears matter what it is. That's it. So it, it, that, that old sales saying is, you know, people like people like themselves. People then, you know, need to trust you. If they trust you, they're going to listen to you. When they listen to you, they're going to buy from you. Exactly. Uh, the selling is first and foremost, whether you're in sales or not, you have to sell yourself. Exactly. When and I selling like yourself you. is not, is by selling yourself, you need to not sell yourself. Because as soon as somebody's feeling that, that you're selling them something, Ears are closed, they're not mine. Yeah. So you have to, I want to say- you, you, You've sold by being likable. There you go. That's it, that's the secret. Yeah, it's, it's likability. Yep. Right? That's, and that's what I was saying, hey, I gotta get Mo here because I don't know if he realizes this, this or not. And the point that I wanted to make, and I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, I said that because, so I'm a public speaking coach and I'm a motivational speaker. You, are, you, know, you do a lot of social media branding and you do vlogging and so forth, and we will get into this. But it's easy for people to say, hey, but it's easy for you too. You're extroverts. Talk about extroverts. If you watch my first video on my YouTube channel, Mo Money, always plug. Go to my first YouTube video yep. and watch how extroverted I was. So awkward. Yep. Hey guys, it's Mo here. <laughs> like yep. for my friends that are watching, yep, I'm vlogging literally word for word. That's Good what job. I said. I was just so awkward. I'm like, okay guys, so Let's start the day and like, no, I haven't always been an extrovert. And it's only sure. when you look back that you cringe, but you need to do that to be able to get to this you, point. You've got to crawl before you walk. That's it. Yeah. And today there's just a lot of people, I'm sure you see them, there's just a lot of people, they just want to get to level 10. They're not willing. They're you not willing man. to just you go can't. up to the ground floor and you start can't. taking the stairs. Yeah. You cannot. You can't run up the ladder, man. You got to go step by step or you're going to fall and break your neck. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. When people look at the success that you have and things that you do, they see you playing around with cheetahs, you've got beautiful women, you've got you know, your, your network of celebrities, billionaires. Um, people see your lifestyle, they go the Lamborghini, they see you driving Rolls Royce another day. They go, oh man, you know, it's easy for this guy. It's, it feels like he's made no wrong turns, no mistakes, he hasn't fallen on his face, he doesn't know what failure is, he, doesn't, he hasn't made any mistakes. Give us a bit of background and then we'll dig okay. a bit deeper. All right, well, when I first moved here, I graduated. When I first moved here, I started working in a construction company. Okay. Before that, born and raised? Born in and Houston? raised in Houston, Texas. Moved to Beirut, finished my university in Beirut. Okay. And marketing and advertising. Yes. Which... And you worked at the petrol station when you were eight, nine, and ten? Yeah, well, my dad owned the gas station. Okay. So I worked there. Good as job. A kid. Boxing, obviously not behind the cashier, but sure. boxing, unboxing, putting... Still working. Drinks. Working, yeah, yeah. yeah, my dad, no, my dad would never just give me money. Yeah. I, I would have to work for it. 
even at eight years old. Yes. Like work, you get money. So he, he, he instilled that for you. He, from, yep. the, from the jump. Yeah. Yeah. From seven, eight years old, literally. More money ain't free money. It's not free money, yeah. man. You got to work, work hard, play hard, you yeah. know? Uh, and then you want to start from the beginning. Okay, eight, nine, ten. And then uh, by high school, I started working different jobs. Started working at a shoe store, mm -hmm. at a waiter, lasagna house. Actually, that was by 15 when I was legally allowed to work with a worker's permit. Yes. 15, 16, I was working three jobs. I was working co-op, which is working uh, at school, finishing by 12, and then going work in an engineering company. Well, one year it was engineer, one year it was, um, what was it? Insurance company. It was two years I did co-op. And then uh, I also did lasagna house as a waiter. And what else did I do? And the shoe store. Mm -hmm. I did three store, three jobs at once. Yep. Uh, did high school, did three jobs, did... And dinner. this is while everyone else is perhaps studying and partying? Studying and Oh, I still partied. Yeah. And partied, okay. Let's I speak. still made time to party somehow. Yeah. Somehow. See, because my dad always, uh, he always took me with him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you want to party? You come with me. Okay. You know what I mean? That's why now I'm like, I've done it all. Yeah. Like, I've partied since I was 15, 16 years old. Right. Because my dad used to take me. My dad used to build the clubs that were there in Houston. Okay. So he was like the god, they used to call him the godfather. So yeah. I used to go as the godfather. I was a short little fat kid. They were letting me into the clubs. Really? Um, so I used to, you know, party with my dad. So by the time I was 18, 19, I was kind of like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But don't get me wrong. I still Being had my fun. That. Still worked hard. But then... Still, always kind of had made a little bit of room for fun. Why not? Yeah, that's true, man. Yeah, uh, you can't be working twenty four seven. You'll blow your head off. And you have to see what works for you. Exactly. Yeah. Get inspired. One of the questions that I get frequently asked is, Kev, how can I increase my motivation? We see great individuals. We see achievers, like many of the guests that I'm bringing on the show. They have the energy. They do so much. They're in a state of flow. How do they do it? Well, my team and I have released an article which I've made available on kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog, the ultimate biohacking guide to increasing motivation. Or you can simply Google Kevin increase motivation and the article should pop up right at the top. It's absolutely free. Read it and most important of all, take the bits and pieces that are relevant to you and apply it into your life to increase your motivation. I hope you find the article of value if you do, feel free to leave your comments and also share it with your circle of friends. Again, you can Google it, Kevin Increase Motivation. It will be the first link that pops up or on my website, kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog. Steve Jobs was known for creating environments where team members would increasingly and accidentally bump into each other. These accidental bumps not only solved many of the challenges that these individuals may have been burdened with, it actually spawned the birth of new ideas, collaborations, and initiatives. I said all this because the founders of Duplays, Ravi and Devinder, decided to create Nook, a co-working space that focuses on helping entrepreneurs who are in the sports, health, fitness, and wellness sphere to succeed. Whether you're looking at renting a room to have your team brainstorm ideas every now and again, or perhaps you're looking at setting up your commercial license at an excellent rate, and above all, you're looking for an environment that's inspiring and collaborative, where you never know who you might bump into, what conversations you can start, and where things lead to. If you're in the sports, health, fitness, and wellness sphere, come check out Nook. Uh, then I moved, I did a year uh, at the University of Houston, in okay. Houston, um, and then we decided to go set up shop in Lebanon, mm -hmm. construction in Lebanon. So we went, started working in Lebanon, finished my univer mainly university, but also working on the side with my, you know, helping the engineers. Basically, I wasn't too experienced in construction because I was, you know, 18 years old, but um, I helped just, my... Just one second, notice that even though today he is in the field of you know, social media management, and he's going to get into this. Um, if you don't know Mo, um, he's in vlogging and he's, you know, hanging out with celebrities, billionaires and bits and pieces. So far, that wasn't the path. Zero. Right? So oh, far, that wasn't the path. Not until Dubai. Yes. Yeah. Not until three years into Dubai. Yeah. So let me start. Beirut. Graduated in Beirut while working in construction, which is my dad's company. 
again, working, not just, you know, getting a salary or getting allowance. No, yeah. my dad, okay, you go, you spend a few hours up there, you work, you watch the project manager, yeah. kind of trail him, tail him, see what he does, and, and then you get paid and you can in, well, go and enjoy it. Makes you appreciate what you yeah, yeah, what where you get the money from. Yeah. Anyways, graduated, um, then I moved to Dubai and worked in a construction company, which again, I didn't even use my degree to go into construction. Yeah. I worked as procurement. Um, and I got this obviously by my network, mm -hmm. uh, which I've made over the years. Yes. Um, Cause obviously resumes nowadays, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. They it didn't, do, didn't do anything. That's true. I used so, a marketing and advertising degree yes. to get into a construction company. Isn't that interesting? And I think there is even a stat that says most of the people that actually get a degree, 90% of them, or 80 or 90%. Don't even use it. And this was an old statistic. I think the, the stat is much higher. Oh, Literally, wow. oh, if you're definitely. just doing a degree for the sake of a degree, the chances of you doing something in that field, minimal. Yep. Minimal. Now, we said that that factor was for likability, saying hello to strangers. But when you build your network, not only are you increasing your likability, but the chances are... Of doing different things. A job, a business opportunity, bouncing off ideas, just anything, anything, yeah. anything, anything. I want people to appreciate that you sweat, yeah, which is true because it hasn't been handed to you. Yeah, traveled to Dubai, worked in a construction company, which had nothing to do with my degree. Yeah, obviously, as I was working in the construction company, obviously it was my first job in Dubai, so my salary was peanuts. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, this is not enough for me. So of course, I found other things I needed. The hustle to do. came out. Obviously, yeah. I need to live, you know, I was making so much money when I was younger, I needed to, to make up for it. And I'm not going to be in Dubai, one of the most expensive cities in the world, and have such a crap salary. Obviously, it's going to be crap because it was my first job sure. out of university, which wasn't even, no engineering, no doctor, no, it was just a regular. So if you can think of that point, take me through your thinking, because people can be in that same position, and there are thousands of people, um, you know, whether it's in the UAE, out of, in the Gulf, around the world who are gonna who are gonna watch this video and listen to the podcast but you have a choice at that point you can go oh life is being unfair to me or i've got my first job and it's or your way of thinking was what go out and find something else to do and make more money yeah i mean obviously it's not that money buys you happiness but it's just the hustle is what what gets me like yeah. number one yes i was not happy because i was going broke every month like yeah. by the end of the month i was like oh my you've god you've got more month than money yeah, I'm just like, what is going on? Two, oh, weeks, into there, it, two weeks into it, and I'm like, hold on, what's going on? Because Dubai is so expensive. Yeah. Like, there's rent, there's gas, there's just phone. Like, uh, you know you know how it is. Yeah. Everybody, not only Dubai, anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world, anywhere absolutely. In the world, but Dubai. Is. Yeah. I was just in Amsterdam. Yeah. Same thing, man. Same thing. Same thing. Everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, First of the month. Oh, man, I still got 30 days to go. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, but you can you can play victim, you can mope about it, or you, you can, can cry hustle. about it, or boom. Hustle, yeah. hustle, hustle. This is what I did. I'm like, okay, what can I do to make more money? What do I love to do? Yeah. I love to make people happy, okay. obviously. Uh, and I love to make myself happy. So, so you, you thought about what am I good at? What am I good at? What makes me happy and what makes... Basically, what makes me happy is seeing other people happy. Nice. What am I good at doing? Partying, okay. and I'm good at setting up parties because yes. I've done it when I was younger. Yes. Um, in high school, you know, house parties and so on. I'm like, okay, I can make a living out of it. Which is really interesting because people might go, oh, lucky this guy. Let me tell you right now, I'm not a, I'm probably the most awkward person at a party. Not the most awkward person at a party, but it's not my gig. It's his gig. Um, in essence, it's you know a trait or a skill or something that you have. And I hate with a capital H organizing stuff. Yeah. Which I never do in any aspect of my life. It's just not my skill set or desire. So it's not at all lucky for him. He's into partying. This, he just looked at, he just, just looked, looked at, at what I thought I was good at. What's my passion. I love to party. And I said, okay, let me do something that let me make something out of it. You know, and I had no money. You know, I had a, I'm going to tell you my salary when I first started about 5,000 dirham salary. Yeah. 5,000 dirhams. That's, that's 1200 us dollars. That's yeah. $1,200. Yeah. That was peanuts yeah. living in. That Dubai. doesn't cover rent here. That doesn't to be clear. Rent. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, no. I had my rent. I had my accommodation set. Okay. Okay, but there was still other. There's still other payments. There was gas. There was car. There sure. was phone. By the end of that, I'm left with, you know, two thousand five hundred dirhams. Yeah. Which is nothing. Eight hundred. So that bucks. inner fire that I got to so do something. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it with no money? So I had to literally figure out how I want to do stuff to make myself happy and make myself money with no money. Yeah. So I reached out to people. Obviously, this is where the networking comes in. 
going out, finding yachts, finding sponsors, finding this, finding this, and seeing the people that wanted exposure mm -hmm. and saying, okay, and I honestly, I was just full of crap. I, I literally just bullshit it until I made, made it happen. I'm like, okay, I can get you this amount of people. I didn't have this amount of people because I was new in Dubai, but I knew I could. Yes. Because of... But just, you made the commitment and you said, I'm, I'm going to work it out. And I'm going to do it's it. It's like a Richard Branson move. I'm going right? to do it. He, he committed to the island and he goes, okay, I better go and find the money now. Exactly. <laughs> so I found the money. I Good. didn't have the people. I found the sponsors and then I kind of just put it all together and I was like, okay, let's hope it works. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying go and do that, but I had to do it because I was stuck. Yes. And I was not about to sit there on a 5,000 dirham salary. Because of the yacht parties, I didn't want yachts, the parties that I was doing. Because yes. of these yacht parties, they were doing okay. Uh, I started br bringing celebrities in, not big cele celebrities, more like influencers. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know uh, Vitaly. Okay, yes. Vitaly, yeah. the Russian, shout out Vitaly, Russian, insane guy. Yeah, I've, I've seen a, a couple of YouTube videos. <laughs> insane, yeah. yeah. The gold digger prank, and you know, he's run across the, the FIFA World Cup, the NBA That's right. okay. finals, he's insane. Anyways, I found him, I'm like, okay, man, let me, you know, come through, come to Dubai. Uh, brought him to Dubai, and this is when I'm, I messaged another uh, an influencer, or he was not really an influencer back then. He was a, just a kid, uh, a little kid with the lions and the tigers and yes. all that. Yeah. So I took Vitaly, and I'm like, hey man, you want to go see this kid? He said, yeah, because he has all these lions and exotic animals. Yes. Yeah. And I remember seeing that. I messaged, yeah, I messaged the kid. I'm like, hey man, you want to come? You want Vitaly to come? He's like, yeah, definitely. You know, he was 14 years old and he was into sneakers and YouTube and he was just starting his YouTube. Okay. He had like, you know, 5,000 followers. Went over to him, I know, I introduced, I well, know, actually he already had met Vitaly a year before. I brought him for the second time. They met, they had fun, blah, blah, blah. And then I started going to his place every few weeks, bringing different celebrities, bringing different YouTubers. And then uh, what I did, this is where the hustle came in because I had no idea about social media. Right. I saw the kid was doing YouTube, was doing Instagram, and just trying to be a social media influencer. And this is when YouTube and everything started picking up. Sure. So I just went on Google. What to do? What? What? How to become an influencer? What to hashtag? What to YouTube? How? What? When? Where? Da 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 da. So I would take this information every time I would go to the kid's place. I'm revealing my, this is, I, this has never been revealed Listen, before. Listen, this big secret of how to be successful in anything you want to do in life, rewind 60 seconds and watch or listen to this again. Google. <laughs> this is the Gary V that goes, Google is your mother. Google is yeah, your mother. Like, Shout out Gary V. I'm actually in touch with him. Gary V is a boss. He is. He is a boss. Gary, Google. Yeah. I would go on Google how to become an influencer, what's the best hashtags, what to post on YouTube, blah, blah, all the questions that I didn't no know. No excuses. So, and this was not even for me. This is, I would go and I would just teach this kid. I would bring him value. Right. Okay. This is when I didn't even know about Gary Vee. I didn't even know about bringing value to people because I literally, I'm just. That was just part of your That was just what I did. No, I, I thought about it. I was like, how am I going to bring this kid value? Because I want him to grow. I want him to be successful. Yes. And then every time I would go and I would teach him, okay, do this, do this. Yo, you're not using hashtags. You're not posting at optimal optimal time. Yeah, that's right. You need to post at 8 p.m. You need to use these hashtags. I had no idea what this was before I Googled it. Right. Googled it right before I went. Yes. And then a few weeks into it, the kid messaged me, hey, bro, I want you to meet my dad. His dad's one of the most successful businessmen here in the UAE. Mm -hmm. I want you to manage me. Manage me. I'm like, okay. Good stuff. I don't know what the heck that is. Like, I don't know how, but I guess whatever I was doing worked enough for you to, to ask me to manage you. So then that's when I started managing him. I had no idea what I was doing. So that was really the beginning of your social media yeah. kind of world. Social media, that's that's really what it was. I mean, going from yacht parties to managing this kid. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, as I was managing him, I was still working in the construction job. So it was part time. You know, getting a salary from from. How did you balance all of that? Because that's that's another aspect of it. Where, when when you look at anyone who's successful, they're really laser focused on one thing. I hated my job. Okay. Rafi, but you needed it's it. Rafi, my boy Rafi, was his company. I hated. He knows it. He, I hated the job. But you were having it as as a necessity. I needed it. I needed to live. I needed to eat. Right. Nine, nine to six. Okay. Right. Cool. Then you have from six 
to 2, 3, 4 a.m., however long you need. To not sit on your bum. To not go home and play PlayStation. Or cry about or it. Or watch YouTube. You want to watch YouTube? Yeah. Watch YouTube to learn about, you know, do research on what you want to do in life. Right. Not to just watch, like, YouTube games and, and just research. Or you can do that. Just don't have that excuse that I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. You want to do that? Sit on your butt and do yeah. it and, and don't cry about it. Yeah. But if you want to hustle and you don't want to cry about, oh, I'm not making money, I'm not doing this, then... And do what then do what I'm telling you to do. That's right. Google. 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 Um Yeah, so then so after, started with managing. Started managing him and then after obviously um, this other kid, which was a friend of, of Rashid, I'm sure everybody knows him, Mo Vlogs. Mo Vlogs was a big YouTuber at the, at that time. You know, he had a million, now he has eight. Mm -hmm. He had a million followers. Rashid had eight five thousand, six thousand. Um, they, they were already friends, but then they were kind of kids. They didn't know how to kind of collaborate with each other. Sure. So obviously I used Mo Vlogs' following mm -hmm. to promote Rashid. And then I used Rashid's lions and tigers and luxury life for his content. And then, which well, today in my opinion we call collaboration. It's called collaboration. I'm not using, like I said, it's collaboration. Yes, using absolutely. each other, using yeah. each other with their consent. Yes, absolutely. Like, yo, use my lines, I'll use your followers. We see this all the time. Rappers jumping on yeah, each other's that's songs, normal. tracks, that's all. But yeah. they were, it's, it's about ego at first, you know, it wasn't so easy back then to sure. just be like, hey, bro, come over. It was more of an ego thing. Oh, I'm rich. Oh, I'm a YouTuber. I'm not gonna. Sure. With all honesty, that's how I saw it. But yes. then I brought them together. Mo Vlogs was like, okay, can you do what you're doing for him, to me? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, sounds good. So then I started managing them both. Okay. Thank God I made, that was making me enough money to quit my construction job. Okay, so then that's when you went full-time into That's when I went full-time into yeah. managing. And then I did that for a full year. I'm not gonna lie, doing that for a full year, even though I never got a shout out or I never got a tag, which I never wanted because I was behind the scenes. I wanted to be behind the scenes. I didn't want to seem like I was managing because I wanted to be popular. That was not what I was doing. I was blowing these guys up. I was creating content, not only creating content with each other, but doing the, the luxury, doing the, the boats, the yachts, the this, the that, making content together, blowing them up. And behind the scenes, I was kind of seen as the older, cool guy. Right. That was never... That in was, essence, you were the role of a producer. And people were noticing that. Sure. And I don't know how they caught on to my Instagram, but eventually my Instagram started, you know, growing. Ticking up, yeah. Ticking up. So that's where... TikToking. TikToking. <laughs> so that's where, that's where it comes in, where I always say network. Network is your net worth. Your network is your net worth. That's right. Because yes. it's all about... That's the thing from Robert Kiyosaki, right? It's always being yeah. surrounded by people. Okay, yes, they were kids. You know, a lot younger than me, and I was doing their thing. But it's all about being surrounded by the right people. With, in my case, it was being surrounded by people that had a lot of followers, and I didn't mean to, but I got a lot. Kind of, it was a snowball effect. I got sure. a lot of followers from from that. At this point, if someone goes, I don't have a network. I'm new to a city. I'm new to a niche. I'm new in the game. Uh, they want, they're doing a complete flip. Whatever it is. Um, if you were to think of yourself with your experience, whether you advise yourself beginning again or someone else, no money, no network, no nothing, no resources, what steps would you tell yourself? Only question when I say, do you have Instagram? Or tell the audience, okay. Or do you have Twitter? Or do you have any social media? And the answer should be yes. Yes, social media, because back in the day, 10 years ago. You have one of these. We have Yes. Even if it's not a five thousand Durham phone, a thousand five hundred dollar phone, if you have a Huawei that's two hundred dollars or one hundred dollars, or you have a laptop or anything, I'm sure. Come on, it's 2020 almost. There's some sort of technology that you can use to reach out to people. That's right. And you reach out, and I'm sure you somehow can add value to somebody. Mm -hmm. Again, these are the words of Gary Vee, and it's it's not just the words of Gary Vee. It's it's really it's, it's just, the it's the recipe for. Anyone who's done well or who is doing well, this, this the law of gravity. You know, for, instance, to everyone. for instance, I reached out to Mr. Muhammad al mm -hmm. a good friend of mine now. I reached out to him a few years ago and I brought him value. Hello, you know, my name is Mo. I have a YouTube channel. I would like to do a day in a life with you. Yeah. And now, if you don't know Muhammad al Habtur, he's a billionaire businessman, um, extremely well known in the UAE and around the world. There's only 2,000 something billionaires in the world and I am one of them. And he just so happened to answer. Let, let, this will be a good segue to go into 
how if people want to reach out to people, how how did you do it? And then perhaps we can go on to over to how not to reach out to someone. Okay. So how did you do it? I just reached oh, out man. and I added value and I said, hey, listen, I would like to. People want to know what your day in the life is like, like how Mr. Muhammad Al Habtour is living. People just see it on propaganda, on, on interviews. Okay, you're sitting in an interview, but that's too proper. Yes. I, obviously, I said it in a nice, short, brief way because yes. people don't want to read paragraphs. Do you remember how you said it? <laughs> oh, this is gold nugget right here. And in case you haven't seen it, if you go to Mo's um, YouTube channel, I'll put in all the links at the end of the, in the show notes, um, you'll see it. That video, if I'm not mistaken, has to date racked up 1.1 million views on YouTube. Yeah, 1.1 plus. Yeah. This is so simple. I thought I didn't know it was so simple. Hello, Ramadan Kareem. I hope all is well with you. I'm reaching out to you because I have a YouTube channel and would love to do a day in the life starring you. Would love to meet and discuss over a cup of coffee if you're available. Email me. Boom. This is right here. Boom. Email just, me. just like that. This is him right here. MK Haktour. Mr. Muhammad, if you're watching this, this was a few years ago. This is how I interviewed you. This is amazing. Went, had a cup of coffee. He gave me 15 minutes. He's like, okay, I have a meeting at 12. I have one. Actually, yeah, I went in at 1245. He's like, I have a meeting I want. He gave me 15 minutes to go and just pitch him. Respect. I went, sat down. He gave me 15. Actually, he said 15, but he gave me 20. Thank respect. you. Respect. Uh, sat and talked. He liked it. He liked the idea. And I said, okay, perfect. When do you want to schedule? He said, two days. Boom, two days. Did the video. Done. So yeah, man, that's just how it, that's how, that's how it works. Um, you just got to reach out. You have social media. Back in the day, you didn't have that access, accessibility to just hit up anybody you want. But please understand, don't go spamming people. So don't go hitting up Muhammad al Habtura, spamming him or reaching out to people. I there messaged one time. That was the first time I messaged. Right. But there, there is a way of doing it because there are ways of not to reach out to people. I'll give you the first one. Like and then we, perhaps yeah, because, we, like we spoke about it. Yeah, before we rolled in. I have people reach out to me and say, hi, what the hell, man? <laughs> like, first of all, you're definitely not going to get a response. Second of all, if I'm busy or if, you know, if I'm not looking or if I'm getting a lot of messages, if I was to look at your message and you've only just said hi, you've wasted that space. Yep. Imagine if you sent Muhammad al Habtur that message and it just said hi. And he read it and it said seen, you would have been like, okay, you just lost your respect. You lost an opportunity. So if you're going to send a message, make sure that you say what you want to say succinctly, brief, brief, and have them in mind. What would be of interest to them? Exactly. Boom. What else? What are some of the things people should not do um, or should do? Don't message and ask for money. I get this every day. <laughs> yes. Don't do that. No, no, no. Not just no like money. $10. Can I have money? Not just $10 or $20. I have people calling me, messaging me, asking me for a million dollars. Mo money, please send me one million dollars. It will help me and my family. I'm like, one million dollars? Listen, we're talking about likability. If you ask for ten dollars, you are not likable. That's it. But right? don't ask for money. The whole idea of likability is you need to give value. You, you need give, to care. You give, 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 then you receive. Even worse, when they email you and they go, I want a job. Yeah. What what is wrong with you? Even worse, when they email you with a CV. Did I ask you for a CV, goddammit? <laughs> I didn't ask you for a CV. So say someone wants to work with you. Yeah. And they want to reach out to you. What will get your attention? Yeah, I create point? content, right? I, I create videos. I videos is, I love videos. You've seen car videos if you watch my Instagram or YouTube. I make videos. Yeah. That's what I like to do. So if somebody wants to come in and get my attention, hey Mo. Let me edit a free video for you. Let me show you what I can do. What a, Send it to me. What a, better yet, don't, don't even hit them up saying, let me do this. Like when someone reaches out to me, I want to work for you. I want to do something. Right. Don't say it. Just do it. Do it. You've got plenty of videos. Go on one of Mo's videos, download it, mash, do what, up. mash it up, do what you got to do, then send it to him. There you go. And guess what? If you like it, I guarantee you'll respond. Not only a guarantee, like I'm actually looking for a videographer right now. Right. And it's so hard to find a good videographer yeah. and an editor. And so how do you stand out? You want to build a network? You want to reach out? You want to cut through the noise? How do you stand out? Don't send him in a, I want a job. Here's my CV. No. Get one of his videos, which is available. So you have absolutely no excuses. Show your skills. 
send it to him. Yep. Because when you see the value of work or you see the quality of work immediately, the chances are you'll be on the phone going, hey, come in. Yeah. I want to talk to you. Exactly. 100%. Easy. And that's a given. And if you're talented, boom, you're done. When you add value to somebody, then they actually have a higher respect to you. Yep. And they will just introduce you to people. You're not even about introducing you to people. You'll just be a part of the team. And then they you, will come seeking for and, you. And you'll never know what happens, yep. honestly. Yep. You exactly. never know what happens until you try. You were at a point where you went in full time and you were managing. Yeah. And then a two, year, two a year into it. Two individuals started growing. No, just two. Okay. Um, just two. It was full time because we were creating content every day. Yes. Um, obviously, for for the the kid, I was doing much more. It was full everything: PR, interviews, everything A to Z. For mobile vlogs, it was more just brand deals. So I was just doing a bit of both. And then uh, a year later, that's when I decided to just jump into managing my own self. Okay. Because obviously I was doing it for somebody else. I got to the point where, I mean, I got to a good 30, 40,000 followers by then mm -hmm. um, within a year. And then I'm just like, a, it's time for me to, it's time for me to manage myself. Right. Take your uh, own path. Take my own path. How do you stand out so people remember you? Hmm. I know you stand out, but say if someone wants that advice on learning how to stand out, what would you share with them to do it's or be like? Good question. How to stand out. Caring, listening. I mean, you got two ears and one mouth, so you got to listen. Use the right you speak. That's it. You and, and truly care because people can actually see that. I like your hair. Like I just I haven't seen his hair and, and I haven't seen him in a long time. He First thing is that I, I like him more. I like him more, but I like him now even more. I don't even know if it's possible. But as soon as I met him over there, he goes, I like your hair. See, like he's asking me these questions. What would you do? And I don't even know that I do them, but you're saying them and I do them all without even knowing. Like I'm not even able to tell you I'm sitting here thinking about it. But and you I do don't it know, naturally. But I do it. Yes. It's just natural. It's yes. not because it's something you study this. Yes. So this is like this is what you do. This is what you teach CEOs. This is how. Yes. Okay, you gotta be blah blah blah. You have all your rules because you study them. You write them down. You know them. Yes. I kind of just it was just experimental for me, and I just do them naturally. And but you refined it now as it just it's become it's a natural. It's just thing. become natural. But yeah. but this is the thing. This is what he does, and if you don't do it, it's a learned skill. Complimenting, man. It's amazing. Hey, man, I love that T-shirt. Yeah. Guess what happens? You that feel person good about will it. remember you. That person will remember. They feel good about it. But if you think about it, anytime you've complimented someone and made them feel good, you feel good about it. Yep. And I can tell you what, the compliment that, like say for example, most of your hair looks nice, it wasn't just at that moment. It's probably gonna be with me for the day, it's gonna be with me for the week. Mm -hmm. Mo is going to be up here all the time. And if I need something that's in his realm, he's probably the first person that's going to come to mind because he complimented me. Yep. You make it a point to do that to every single person you meet, you'll see the difference. Every day, try to compliment as many people as possible. Boom. In a week, forget a year, and watch what happens. See how you feel within that week. How or you feel in that that's day. True. Yes. How you feel. That's you true. feel so much better because you're giving off that good energy. Yes. The energy comes right back. Yes. It just bounces off. Yes. You. And I really think, apart from the fact that you're willing to talk to strangers, uh, that you're smiling, that energy thing that you mentioned, it's, a crit it's been a critical factor to your success. Definitely. No doubt. Definitely. No doubt. And karma. Yep. Good energy, karma. You do good, you get good. Man, you respect. do bad. You will get bad. Oh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not an angel. I've done bad. And honestly, with all honesty, it's ridiculous how karma works. I don't know if everybody believes in karma, but I do highly because I do bad. I get bad times 10. And I'm not an angel. I've done bad. I'm going to stick to doing good. I'm going to stick to doing good. Because <laughs> you lie. You do cheat. You do anything. It'll come back times 10. Yeah. Uh, so stick to doing good because you do one good. It'll come back times 20. Yes. Even if it come back times three, times two, times one, it'll come back. But if yes. you do bad, it'll hit you 10 times one. That's the thing. And I've learned that's out of experience as well. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, so if we're talking growth, if we're talking you starting out, if we're talking about you wanting to make changes, because it doesn't matter if you're an introvert, it doesn't matter if you're an extrovert, it doesn't matter if you failed and you're starting from zero, or if you're just new to the game. There are, these are just principles. There's no such thing as introvert and extrovert, because anything is learned. Everything is learned, but these are the excuses that people will have. That's right? fine. That's it's fine. just understanding this is the law of gravity or like the sun rising from the east. Yeah. If you just apply it, you can have the same results. Exactly. Just like training. I mean, you go to yes. the gym. Okay, you're not going to go to the gym in one day and, and, and become a beast. You need to go to the gym consistently. Again, consistency. It's all about consistency. 
you can't just compliment one person one day and then be like, oh, okay, I felt good, done. No, you compliment nice. 10 people a day for a year, like you said, every single day, consistency. Go to the gym every single day or five days a week, four days a week, consistently, yes. you'll see gains. Yes. You consistently be a good person. You give good vibes, you give compliments, you, you talk to random people, you say hello. All oh, this is all just one big formula. So, so it's not a one-time thing. It's not about- I don't know it once, oh, it hasn't worked. Everything you're doing, everything we've said, everything we've talked about, talking to people, being open, being flexible, complimenting people, talking to random strangers, all of this is, okay, cool. But if you do it one day, it's like going to the gym. You can't just go to the gym one day and, oh, look at me, like, I'm not, I'm not fit. Like no. brushing your teeth, man, you do it every day. You do it every day. You do I it. hope so. It's a formula, <laughs> it's a formula. You, if you do this formula, if you apply this formula to life every day, being consistent with it, being happy, smiling, complimenting, just giving good vibes, yes. you will see results. You just become that person that everybody likes. Why? Because you like everybody and respect. Also, also, respecting the janitor the same way you respect the CEO. That's also another thing I, I love to, to focus on is you got to respect everybody the same. Absolutely. The labor worker on the street is the same as a human being as a CEO or, or a president or a billionaire. Yeah, Doesn't we matter. all bleed the same blood. We all have the same blood. We're all human. We all come from mama. That's you right. You know what I mean? We're all coming from the same place. So just have respect for people, man. People see that. People feel your energy. People feel your respect and they have more respect for you as a person. Now, okay, self-help, being a good person, all that is the core of everything else, is the chunk of the tree. Yes. When you have that core, everything comes your way. Yes. Business, opportunities, health, well, everything, everything, everything comes from that pillar. And that pillar needs to come from consistently, consistently doing all of these things. What's a habit of yours that you feel has been critical to your success? Um, or that has helped you grow? I would say consistency again. Okay. Like again, like the discipline of just, just doing it. Exactly. Like for YouTube, for instance, when I first started doing YouTube, I was dropping videos five days a week, mm -hmm. making sure it was five days a week, same time, same, uh, I mean, same dates, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. um, and just be keeping consistent. And then obviously after a few years, that's when I started my company and then I slowed down, which I regret. Uh, which I need to get back on, but we're I, holding him accountable right here. Yeah, yeah, but like because I because I started my business, I focused on on something else. Yes. So it's okay because that's I mean YouTube wasn't making me tons of money. It was more of a hobby, and it kind of grew my my brand name. So sure. I used that whether it was YouTube and my Instagram, which is what the following was growing. I use my following now as leverage for my business. So when I go into a company and I say, okay, hey, listen, this is what I can do for you. This is me, Mo Money. Yes. Okay. They see my page. They see the content I've created, and they say, oh, "Okay, well, yeah, here's my money." So I use my brand name, sure. my personal brand name, as leverage for my own company to get myself clients. Have you faced rejection recently? I face rejection more than I face exception, and that's the only way. Well said. Well said. Way more. I'm talking. You should almost quit that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just, I don't, I never said that. It just came up, but that's just, uh, that's, that's just, a good one. Yeah. That's just how it is. You have to face rejection. Whether when I was young, when it was with women, you know, when I was a short little fat kid mm -hmm. trying to, trying to, you know, talk to women and this and that, I would go and I get rejected a hundred times. Mm -hmm. And then one girl would be like, Oh, okay. You know, he's cute. He's okay. Yeah. He's a short fat kid. I wasn't that cute. I was short. I was fat. I wasn't, you know, I guess I was a little funny. Maybe like that's what attracted girls to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't that good looking. I was, you know, I, I didn't know what I had, but I talked to every single woman, every single girl at that time. I was, I was a baby. Yeah. Um, but I mean, rejection happens everywhere, like in business all the no, time. No, no, that's I'm yeah. coming to that. Yeah. When I was, I'm saying when I was a kid, it yes. was more girls. And then, so you were aware of it as, as a kid? As a kid. Yeah. Yeah. You were aware of it. I was aware of it, of it mm -hmm. as, a, as a short little kid trying to talk to, you know, a lot of, a lot of girls and trying to, you know. You what know gave you, you the were. confidence to just keep going? Um, because some people are, won't even try it because they're so scared of rejection. What it just it? cripples them. Yeah, I don't know what it was, honestly. I was, I was always outgoing as a kid. Okay. So I just kind of tried. I just kept trying. And I realized that the more I failed, the more I would succeed. One step closer. Yeah. Really? You're one step closer. Just how it is with business. You go, 
I mean, I'm on the DM every single day, yeah. DMing, let's say a hundred different restaurants or a yeah. hundred different clients. And what 90 say is irrelevant to what the 10 could say. So you can have 90 rejections and it's not 90, 90% rejection. It's not. It's 10% this, it's, yeah, it's, it's here. It's still 50, 50 on each one. Boom. Exactly. Yeah. Forget about the rejection. It's about who accepts and who, whoever accepts puts money in your pocket. Whether it's putting money in your pocket or whether it's an interview with a billionaire. Yes. You know, like I'm not gonna lie, he's not the only person I DM. Yes. Yeah. I must have DM'd, you know, twenty of the biggest businessmen in, in Dubai. Sure. Yeah. But and the thing is to also realize rejection is not personal. No, so some not. of the rejections you might have received or the ones are plenty that I've received, it's, it's nothing personal. It just that's doesn't another work. Thing I go by. That's another another motto I go by is don't take everything personally. You have no idea. Don't you know, take everything personally. Nothing. It's, the world doesn't revolve around you. You take everything personally, you're going to fail. Yeah. You just shoot. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever doesn't happen. Do your best. Do it right. Do it effectively. And then just let, let's see how it falls. Yep. Yeah. Always do your best. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Get inspired. Imagine if you could present yourself, your thoughts, and your ideas with clarity and confidence. Imagine if you could speak to influence and impact. Imagine if you could communicate like a commanding and charismatic leader. Well, you can, given the right information and the investment of effort from your end. How do I know that? As a public speaking coach, I work with CEOs, world leaders, and presidents. And when they hire me, they expect nothing short of results. And over the years, it's been two decades now, two challenges have risen for me being unable to help the majority of people. I'm usually on a plane, with the majority of my time being booked a good year or two in advance. And my one-on-one -on -one session to work with someone in person generally starts at $20,000. So we solved the problem by making my public speaking course available for you online. Everything that I teach my clients when I'm working one-on-one. -on -one. Thoughts, tips, strategies, how to do things, all on video, all sequenced in the right order for you to be able to watch, re-watch, practice, and refine your presentation, your speaking, and your overall communication skills. And guess what? You will get results. Now, you can have this course, not for the $20,000 that my clients pay me when we work one-on-one, -on -one, you can have it for $9.97. That's right, just $9.97. You might be thinking, well, why are you offering something that you charge $20,000 for, for $9.97? It's simple, because those who want to work with me one-on-one -on -one will still hire me. But for many whom I might be out of their budget, this is a great way to develop their communication skills, to cut through the noise, to rise above the rest, and to beat their competition. If you're serious about wanting to develop your skills to be able to present your thoughts, your ideas, and yourself with clarity and confidence, to be able to speak, to influence and impact, and to communicate like a confident and charismatic leader, then this course is for you. Go on to kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash course and get started today. Uh, what about resilience? What keeps you going? What keeps me going is honestly just... Because we've all had it. I mean, have you, I've had it I, you know, just about every day. I mean, I joke and I say just about every day I wake up grumpy and I wake up like I don't feel like doing shit. Mm. That's the reality of it. But the difference between, for me at least, when I've seen successful people or winners or achievers and anyone else, it's not that they don't have these feelings. They have it, whether it's as frequent or not. They have it, but then they choose. Hey, I'm not going to dwell on this. I'm not going to just mope around. Like if I'm grumpy, I know what's good for me, a double espresso. Yep. Or I need to go for a run, or I need to go to the gym, or I need to have a conversation with someone like Mo, and boom, I'm on fire. I just remember patience. Uh-huh. That's another thing. Nice one. By. Patience. I always remember the days where I felt like this, and then I remember a few days later, or even the next day, I felt like I was on top of the world. Okay. So one day, yeah, you're going to feel like crap. Next day. A week later. What are you telling yourself to keep going? Patience. Because people quit. No. You just, they throw in the towel. That's the thing. I always just tell myself patience because every single time I tell myself patience, I wait. Okay. I wake up. I feel like crap. 
Do you do something to decompress? Like when you're feeling like when you're feeling it like what do you do? Do you say something to yourself? Do you go and get a coffee? Do you go for a walk? What do you do? Honestly, so for someone that's watching or listening, when you go to the gym, mm -hmm. when you work out, yep. you feel much better. Well, you let yep. out all the endorphins. You just you just feel good about yourself. Yes, the same. Uh, yeah. You just sweat it out. Okay, not everybody's an athlete. You don't. Have, I mean, well, I'm not an athlete. Look at this. I'm eating my butt off. Baby, here. you look like an athlete. So <laughs> it's not about being an athlete. This is all the five star hotels in here. That's what it is. It's all the food <laughs> I've been eating, man. Uh, it's not it's about. Still looking that. good, bro. It's still oh. Yeah. Not the belly, man. No. Yeah. I'm trying to gym, but the belly is not going away. It's yeah. all this food I'm eating every day. Um, yeah, it's just being patient and knowing that life's a roller coaster and yeah. it's not always going to be rainbows and unicorns and sunshine. You're going to have rainy days every single day. It's going to. It's not going to be. You know, Better get your umbrellas out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's not going to be all amazing every single day oh man i'm making so much money now it's life in, of an entrepreneur that's right life you as have as to learn to dance in the rain that's you the thing to. yeah do you do something else do you, do you watch like you, know, you can't not gym you can't do, not, do you, not gym go running go, do netflix go for, do you just chill out like go. sometimes i watch a movie just to decompress and then okay. after a movie like 90 minutes of just me you know decompressing i find that i'm recharged honestly I'm it's, there's no one there's no one formula for decompressing because we're all human. Everybody has their own, you know. So gym is for mental. You. It could be gym sometimes. I mean, I watch Friends. Okay. Yeah. Friends is on in my house all day, every day, whether I'm working, whether I'm not. It's just there because it, it cracks me up. Yeah. Everybody has their own thing. You know what I mean? It could be the gym. It could be a show. It could be Netflix. But don't sit there and watch Netflix all day and say I'm de decompressing. I need no. to feel good and watch it. You and know. then you do eight hours stretch. And then you uh, you know, you're sitting at home. Tub of ice cream. You know, it doesn't work like that. Chips. Do it yeah. trial it's trial and error. It's do stuff until you figure out what's good for you, whether it's work wise, whether it's decompressing, whether it's And the key is making the choice to do something about it yourself. Like don't wait for a friend to come and pick you up. No. Like, you gotta do it. You gotta go out there. Or else it's not no one's just gonna come to you and just hand you stuff. Yeah. Like, oh here, sorry. Sorry you had a bad day. Take this. No, you got to go out. And now with social media, you don't even have to leave your house. Mm -hmm. It's your weapon. There's really no excuse. No excuse. I mean, this right here. It's the world. Yeah. I mean, this, there are people who have built multi-million dollar, if not billion dollar businesses. And it just started with this. I mean, this and a connection. And even if you don't have, you can't afford a data connection, go to a cafe and just use their Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi. Buy a $2 coffee and use their free Wi-Fi. Go to Dubai Mall. They have free Wi-Fi yeah. in the whole mall. <laughs> Absolutely no excuse. You have people that will say, "Oh, you know, I want to start something, but I don't have the resources. I don't have the money. I don't have the skill." So, say for example, if they want to do vlogging or they want to go into the influencing field or they want to, I don't know, work on a on a certain skill or a trait or a business. I don't have a designer. I don't have this. I don't have the access to aspect. When you started, who did all the video editing for you? Who did the capturing for you? You can who see did the it for sound? yourself. You go to my first vlog, you'll see, you can tell it was definitely me. Oh, I made it. It was definitely me. I would spend four to five hours sitting there, first learning how to use iMovie and then doing it. Horrible music. I mean, the music was okay, but like not knowing. I didn't know. I didn't know. Honestly, I didn't know what I was doing, but I did it. And it was trial and error for about six to eight months. Yep. Uh, until I was able to not hire a full-time employee. I was able to just pay somebody three times a week. Yes. You know, like a hundred, I forgot what it was. It was cheap. Um, and you can get so many freelancers. He was today. a freelancer. Yeah. yeah. I would just pay him three times a week to edit my three vlogs. Cause then that way I would have more time to create. So I would create, 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 send him the footage. He would edit and I would just continue creating. I would have a backlog of, of content and then I would just post consistently. And then that's how I was able to get up to 60,000 subscribers. Because you have people who, who are just complaining, you know, oh, I, I, I'd, I'd do this if I had the resources. I'd do this if I had a team. I'd do this if I had the setup. There are so many people that built multi-million dollar businesses, multi-million dollar in income, and they were on their own. Yeah. Like their first employee would have come in after they've actually generated a million dollars. So they literally did every aspect of the business. Which is what I'm doing right now. Get inspired. You know this by now that we are the number one YouTube show slash podcast that's coming out of the Middle East from Dubai. If you like the idea of having your brand reach at least a million eyeballs per episode, then feel free to reach out to my office 
on kevinabdurrahman.org. Without further delay, let's continue this great conversation. I looked at one of your videos on Instagram, um, More Money Official, right? Oh yeah. A mind that's stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. There you go. And it's a quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes. Yeah. What was your most recent experience that stretched your mind and that you can never go back to what it was before? <sighs> Skydiving. You did it recently? I've done it. Matt, I'm scared. I've done it before, I'm but scared. I just did it again. And honestly, because I'm, I'm an adrenaline junkie, so okay. like I love just just that rush and just skydiving, man. It, it changes you. Like really, when you're flying, you're flying. What's going through your head, man? Just nothing. Just rush, and you're just looking down, and you're literally flying full speed, full speed, just oh dear. flying down towards the towards That's the, the stuff that makes me sweat. It's, it was just an unbelievable experience. I did it a few years ago when I first came to Dubai and uh, it was amazing. I forgot about it. And this, I just recently did it. This was a reminder. Oh man. I, I guess when you're skydiving and you see the palm, like if I was to ever do it, it would just be because I'm a visual person and I love the palm. Like, I'm like, oh, that picture looks real good. Yeah. And it was just a rush. It was amazing. And now I don't know what's next because I love, I just love adrenaline. So I don't know. I just want to take it up a notch. Oh, actually, I did go on a, on a G4, uh, what's it called, a fighter jet. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, the Red Bull, on the Red Bull Air Race, you know those Red Bull yeah, Air yeah. Race jets? Yeah, The crazy one to go, they do yeah, the players the G, and everything. Yeah, G7, like the G4 is a 7, and it's like, it was, it was insane. So that was awesome. In business, in the last 12 months, were you, did you have a certain frame of mind, a frame of reference, or something that happened to you that made you think, okay, my way was different, my way, my way was wrong, I have to readjust? Have you had an experience where there's no wrong or you won't know, you won't know what's wrong until unless you, you try do it. it. Well, there's a better way of doing it. And it's not about, well, it's not about people say, oh, quality over quantity. No. People ask, oh, what's better quality or quantity? Mm -hmm. Obviously it's quality over quantity, but again, no. The there's, quantity there's, helps the quality. There's yeah, exactly. You have to, you have to do quantity before you find the actual quality. And then when you find the quality within that quantity, that's when you take it and you multiply. Right. And then again, even when you find that one quality thing that you like to do out of that quantity, out of the million things you've tried, you find that one thing that you love, boom, you do it, you may take it, you multiply. But then you got to go again into the trial era, trial era and continue back, go jump back into the trial and find another thing. Keep going to the quantity and find another quality and just keep going. It's, you just, it's a never ending. Cycle. Repeat. 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 Yeah. That's another thing all millionaires say, millionaires and billionaires say, is you can't just have one revenue stream, one source of income. Yeah. You got to have four or as five. many as possible. There you go. Not just four or five, as many as, as possible. As many as you can. Many. You, you master one, boom, you find another. Even if it's commission from here, even if it's just connecting people, which is what I do a lot. When Warren Buffett was asked, what's the best investment or what would he recommend a young person to develop in terms of uh, best investment he could make or they should make? He said public speaking yep. to be the best investment. What's been your best investment so far? In terms investing of in yourself, mm -hmm. investing in myself. And did you focus on anything in particular? Um, investing in, in myself as in my brand name. Okay. Because that's how I get my business now. Mm -hmm. I, I use my name to be able to get any business, um, any clients, anybody, any meetings I set, they know who I am. So this is why I'm able to, to get the business over the competitor. Now, I think this is also important because people need to realize that investing in yourself or investing in your brand name isn't just something that's for entrepreneurs. It's actually something that everyone should understand and to do. Mm -hmm. Like you need to invest in yourself if you're an architect and you're looking to pick up a job with a big architecture firm, mm -hmm. right? Because for them, it's going to be, why should I pick you over 90 other people? Because you know, You've either given value, you've shown your work, you've built your brand so that they know you, and you're being headhunted. There you go. That's formal branding. Yes, sir. Is there a quote that you live by? Uh, yes. Two quotes. Okay. Patience is a virtue, and karma is a brand. <laughs> and just like that, self-explanatory. I mean, I'm not getting into complicated quotes and this and that, and uh, two very simple, very simple. Number one is patience. Number two is calm. Boom. That's it. What's your definition of success? Definition of success would be? Like what it means to you, because 
it, people should realize that success means different things. And success means you're things. doing what you do, you're making money, and you're happy. Yeah. Well, you're happy and you're making money because I'm telling you right now, money does not buy you happiness. 100%. I've spoken to millionaires, I have friends that are millionaires, and they're like telling me, they're like, man, it's not, it's not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. Money does not buy you happiness. And no matter how much money you have, that does not mean you are successful. You're successful when you have your happiness within mm -hmm. and you have the people around you that are making you happy and you're, I wouldn't say making money because obviously money does have some it sort important. of, it's it very important. important. It does have some sort of happiness there. But you need to go like, on the right it. journey. Exactly. You need to be happy with the people around you. You need to surround yourself with people you love. Yes. You need to be happy within. And you need to be making money so you can eat. Absolutely, Obviously, man. You, you gotta pay eat. rent. You can't walk up to your landlord and go, hey man, I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the, I get hate the it when people say money doesn't buy you happiness because it, it does in a way because for you, for you to live you and need eat to and have drink, money. you need to have happy. You need to, but having an abundance of, of money is not what's gonna make you happy. So you need to be happy. You need to be happy with what you're doing and you need to just be surrounded by people that love you. Surround yourself with people also that are more knowledgeable than you. Yes. You know, yes. have more experience. Because so if you're surrounding yourself with, with people that are like, you know, I don't want to say dumber, dumber than you, but it's not, a, no, no if, if you're the smartest people. person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You're in, there, you're in the wrong thank room. Thank you baby. very much. You're in the wrong room. Exactly. 100%. But that requires what you said, where you want people who are better than you, that requires ego being out the door. Oh, 100%. You can't have that. You can't. Ego is, you can't have an ego. You can't walk up into a room and act like, oh no, I'm the boss. I have a hundred thousand followers. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm the big boss. I walk into a room like I'm nobody. I introduce myself to every single person. Sometimes people are shocked. Mm -hmm. Walk them into a room and you know, it's a room full of influencers like the, the, the one I went to recently. Oh, you know, 30, 40 influencers. And you know, there's an influencer that has like 20,000. She's sitting there like, I'm the boss. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, what's up? I'm Mo, nice to meet you. And then she's just like, oh, hi. And then they open up. Just be real, be yourself. Bring yourself down here. You and know? learn, man. Just be, be open learn to from, learning. Learn from somebody that even, if, try to learn from somebody that's even dumber than you or has less experience. Yes. You. Maybe they know something, maybe they know something more than you yeah. that you don't. Yeah, Not saying surround yourself by them, yes. but try to surround yourself by people that are much smarter and much more knowledgeable yes. and just have done more than you in life. But if you see somebody that's, you know, less knowledgeable than you, don't act like you're the big boss. There, and guaranteed from that person, there's something you can learn. 100%. It might not be in that domain, yeah. but everyone has lived a different life or they're living a different life. You'd be surprised. I mean, I learned from the, the barista that's serving me a coffee. I learned from my nephew. When I was working in construction, I was, my, my, six, my first six months was in Ras Al Khaimah, one hour away from Dubai, mm -hmm. one hour drive every single day. So I would go there and I was literally learning from the labor workers. Yeah. The labor workers, the ones that were making $400 a month, mm -hmm. working 12 hour days in the sun, were teaching me something. Yeah. You know, my first job, I, know what I, I had no idea what I was doing, but I was learning from labor workers. Yeah. You can always learn something. Absolutely. Something. And it's really a choice you make mm -hmm. that you want to learn. And you also learn, I also learned that no matter what job you have, no matter what position you're in, if they can be happy, then you are, oh, yeah. come on. There's some people that I meet, you know, the labor workers or, you know, that are just have the biggest smile on their face yes. and they're making $400 a month yeah. working 60 hour weeks. Yes. And I'm just like, wow. And I sometimes I wake up and I'm pissed. Yes. What am I pissed off? About? Absolutely. Come on. Let's talk about the three F's. All right. Flaws, frustrations, failures. People will look at individuals that they admire. And I'm sure you have already people that admire you. They're inspired by what you're doing. They're following you. And so they'll see you. You know, I'll just use the word hero loosely. What I want to do is I want to get people to realize the human behind the hero. Yeah. For them to realize that every person, no matter who it is, right, they have flaws. You know, they're just, you know, as, as heroic as they are in whatever they do, and God bless them and good on them for inspiring others like yourself, um, we all have flaws. Mm -hmm. We have frustrations and we continuously face failures. Of course. What's a flaw you have that you're aware of? Well, that I have now or that I had before? Either or. Uh, Answer it as you wish. I was a big troublemaker. Okay. I always found trouble. I'm not sure if you fixed that, have you? No. Not yet. I'm working on it. 
30 years old and I'm still hey, still a troublemaker. Life is a work in progress. I'm telling you, man, trouble. I've always somehow... Trouble finds me. It's crazy. <laughs> and no, it doesn't find you. If you're a troublemaker, you're a troublemaker. It's because of you. It's not, <laughs> At least you're aware. It's not luck. Yeah. yeah. So I've always been a troublemaker and that's my flaw. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. And what's a frustration that you currently have or you had that you've dealt with? One of the frustrations I've had to come to terms with is I've always, when I was younger, wanted everything on the go, like real quick. I make a decision, I want to make it happen. Speed, if it wasn't going at the speed that I was on, was something that would frustrate me. Okay. And often it didn't go at my speed, so I would spend years being frustrated. Okay. Um, what I would think about frustration is because I've always been hustling, I've always been trying to make money. Yeah. Not because it makes me happy, but just because it was kind of like a hobby. <laughs> I've always just been working since I was young, so I've always it's done. what you know. It's yeah. So when I'm not, when I'm making, when I'm working, but things are not going my way and uh -huh. I'm not making enough, it frustrates me. Okay. Not because I I want to have the luxury to buy things, or but it just frustrates me when. I guess when you I'm know not, that you can do better. Yeah. So it just frustrates me, and I'm just like, all right, no, I need to do more. So I go out and I grind even harder, and. If I'm not making enough or if I'm not doing enough, I get frustrated. Flaws, frustration, and failure. Failure. Uh, have you had a failure recently? Or can you take us back to um, just whatever, whatever failure you faced in recent years? Like it's just complete failure? Oh, how, however you define failure or whatever you like I mean, to share. I fail every day. It's, it's rejection. Yeah. That goes back to rejection, failing to getting a client. Because for me, that's what I'm doing every day is yes. trying to reach out to different clients, different people, different businesses and getting them on board. And when I'm not able to get them on board, that's a failure for me. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I just failed this client. Let me try to move. But I don't, I'm not like, oh, this guy said no. Damn it. And then I cry. You don't live in it. Oh, because he's only one out of the hundred people that I've messaged. Boom. So out of a hundred people that you message, you know, 98 are going to say, let's say 92 say no. Eight people say maybe, two people say yes. Two people say yes, that's that's monthly, that's two people giving you monthly income. That's right. Out of the hundred you message. That's why there's really that's why there's really no such thing as failure. Mm -hmm. Because you, you just learn from what you fail. Right. And then, so it's not really failing, but you're just excelling. Yes. You just you fix what you failed, or you fix what you just messed up on. I wouldn't call it failing. Mm -hmm. You just okay, you messed up on this, you tweak it, you make it better, you move on. What sacrifices have you made or are having to make in order to get to where you want to go? Because nothing comes with that sacrifice. You know, anyone that's delusional to think that they can have everything they want, maybe a few, such a small percentage of people that can have it handed to them on a plate. For most people who want to achieve something in life, whatever. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There was a gap between my, my influencer phase and my company phase where I couldn't afford to live in a, in a, in a fancy apartment. Okay. So I had to cut down on living in my fancy apartment. In order to be able to continue with the vision of what you have. Exactly. Living on friends' couches. Yeah. I had to do that. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Do that for like two or three months. Put my ego aside. Ask my friends, hey bro, can I crush on your couch? Yeah. Okay, no problem. Boom. Yeah. Crash on couches for two and a half months maybe. Respect. It's a sacrifice you had to make. I had to sacrifice. Oh, nah. It's not that I had to make it. I had no choice. Mm -hmm. I, had not, I didn't have enough money. Yes. Actually, I did have enough money to be able to maybe rent a room in some apartment, but I put my ego aside and I used my friends, my network that were able to help me and say, hey man, let me crash on your couch. Because whatever I've got, it needs to go into that business to, to get it to the next level. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm you got to sacrifice, basically my ego, sacrifice my ego, yeah. which is what everybody Huge. Imagine, you know, I needed to tell my friends, hey bro, I, I need a place to crash. Yeah. <laughs> it's the right thing to do. I did it. Yeah. The, it's important to realize because whatever we choose to do, there's always a sacrifice. And this is the thing that you need to ask yourself. And you need to go, okay, if this is the kind of life I want or if this is what I want, I need to be accepting of the sacrifice. And respect, man, because not many people are willing to do what you did and not many people are willing to say. To admit. To, to say, it. hey man, mind. slept on the couch for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. But make, makes the success all that sweeter. There you go. Respect. Yeah. If you see where I'm living now, you'd be like, oh, damn, that's worth it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Dubai is just like... So good. It's just so good. So inspiring. Because it's so... Uh, Man, I, I wake up every day when I'm in Dubai, I'm like, 
oh man, this city, I just look at it, I'm like going, get your ass up, start hustling. Because there's <laughs> so much opportunity. Like I've traveled yeah. a lot of places. I've been to Europe, I've been to Asia, you know, Thailand, Singapore, um, beautiful Amsterdam, places. amazing, beautiful. Places. beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. America, born and raised in America, yeah. Houston, Dallas, LA, New York, blah, 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 blah. This goes on. But I'm not gonna lie, Dubai is definitely number one because- there's, there's honestly nothing like Dubai. There's just so much potential, so much opportunity. It's beautiful, there's brand new things to do every day. And I'm not just saying that because obviously we're in Dubai and, and promote Dubai. Yes, that's what I, that's what I do no, for- No, but you can tell when someone genuinely loves the place. It's, like, yeah. it's genuine. When I say I love Dubai, I genuinely love Dubai. Like, yeah. My friends know this, we're not making it up. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I would have to say Dubai is definitely number one. And I think that if you didn't love Dubai, you wouldn't be here. You'd be wherever you love. I'd be out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I was recently in Amsterdam. I really like the Netherlands. I love it. I've been yeah. there seven times. Yeah, Netherlands, like it. everywhere I go, like I've been to Utrecht. I've People been to are so Rotterdam. nice. Oh, People are so nice. People are nice, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything, I was telling my brother this, everything is done, I use the word good. But I mean, the mentality is if we're gonna do something, and now it's it's actually in part of their fiber, like part of who they are. But if I'm trying to really, you know, just speak through my thoughts, I just felt like everything was good. You know, the croissant was good. The level of service was good. If you're buying something, it's not cheap, mm. but you know that it's gonna be good. The food is good. The standard of, you know, their interior design, everything is just good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. And okay. I don't know how to explain it. And sure, they pay high taxes and you know bits and pieces and there are other things that I might not like about it, but it really inspired me. I was like, this is a great example of a country because any of the city that I've gone to, the people are good. Everything, there is a certain minimum standard. Something about it. Yeah, something about their vibe. It's just, yeah, it's just, mm. it's really good. that you don't see, for example, in Asia, there's a lot of, okay, or uh, the Indian subcontinent or in certain you know, cultures, you always have to be worried about someone trying to rip you off or someone delivering substandard. So say you ask for a kitchen and next thing you know, the kitchen is wonky and sideways and it doesn't measure up. And if you're going to go to the dentist and they do a filling, you're not so sure how good the quality yeah, is. Yeah, you're not sure putting in there. <laughs> of all the things you've done, and to date you've done quite a bit, um, what role helped you grow the most? I pictured a friend of mine who, um, I remember when she started working in the corporate world, it was her first job and she didn't know she pretty much didn't know anything, but she was on the phone and then when someone would call up, she literally had one hand on the keyboard, back when we used to have computers and a keyboard, and the phone that was connected to a landline. And she, yeah, she would literally be like this, holding the phone in one hand, and whatever question the customer was asked, she would enter it into Google. Wow. And that was her crash course into learning. That's that was her first corporate job. Yeah. Wow. That reminds me of how, what, what happened to me in Lasagna House. Remember I told you I was a waiter? Yes. But I was a ho you have to be a host or a hostess for three months before you become a waiter so okay. you can learn. So my first two weeks into the job, I was a host, obviously, you have to do it for three months. And then one, one of these days, in the first two or three weeks, one of these days, there were short waiters and it was a Friday and it was jam packed. And the lady, the manager was like, Mo, we needed a waiter. And I'm like, I've never waited Sink or swim, baby, let's go. Never done it in my <laughs> life. And she's like, we need, we need you. Can you do it? And I'm like, do I have a choice? No. I just went and did it, and I ended up being the highest tipper, highest Amen. earned tip. I am not surprised. That day. I guarantee likability. That's what it was. Mm. Likability. Just crash course. I went and did it. I had no idea what I was doing. I was dropping plates. I was, anyways. For an extra 20, I'm going to drop a plate. <laughs> Boom, let's go. We all come at a point in time with our relationships, with a project, with the, just a day in our lives where we're, we just get a mental block or frustration. Are you aware of those when you get them? I get them. Yeah, of course. We're human. Yeah. What do you do when you get them? Like, how do you get yourself out of that mental block? With me, I'm very sporadic. I'm very random. There's no specific thing that unblocks my mind or unfrustrates me. It goes back to patience okay. because I've gone through so much. This too shall pass. So much. I'm not talking about. So the stuff I talk about here. Tip of the iceberg. Exactly. There's a lot of stuff that I've been through in my life. That's just insane craziness that's not going to be shared ever on social media because it's just me. You know what I mean? Deep, deep, deep stuff uh, that's happened to me that I will never share, but I know because this happened to me, you. it's built me. And because this happened to me, like one thing which can be shared is I got into a car accident. Mm -hmm. This is 22 stitches on my 21st birthday. Yeah. 
this was open. Doctor said if you came, if you came one minute, so one right. minute late, you would have been gone. So out one minute. So I guess you've got an insignia, like a daily reminder. Daily reminder that I was about to be gone. Yeah. So like so every day is a gift. Literally, literally, every day is a gift. But that's not that's not what I think about because not everybody has a scar, not yes. everybody has a, a you know a near death accident. I just think about all the, the stuff that I'm not able to share, and I'm thinking about okay, if I overcame all that, then there's so much more I can do. Yeah. But there is an old saying that you can't be in the frame to see the picture. So how, how, how do you find yourself in terms of your decision making process or to get perspective on things? Okay. Um, who do you seek, whether it's mentorship or advice or a confidant? Okay. Uh, do you have people like that? that well, I haven't that, had her my whole life, but definitely. Accountable for you to be able to see a, a fuller perspective of what's going on in your life? I mean, she is, she hasn't been here my whole life with my girlfriend, definitely. Okay. She for, keeps you grounded? For the past three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I share, sometimes I don't like sharing everything because it's not something that I want her to worry about. Okay. You know what I mean? But then I'm like, there's something wrong, right? And then I'm like talking to her and she, she's like, what's wrong? Off the bat. I'm like, no, nothing. She feels it. She's like, mom, I know you. What the hell is it wrong? And I'm like, nothing. She's like, okay, whatever. And then I end up spitting it out. But then she ends up finding me a solution. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's people, because there's like not, she, So she's your sounding board. Definitely. Yeah. Because there's only a very few people in my life that, that are close to me, yeah. which is my, my family and her and you know another very dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much it. Uh, so these are the people. But they keep you grounded. Definitely. Because yeah. it's the people that care about you. That really keep you grounded. Absolutely. And in this world, is you can count, you can't count them on yeah. your fingers. I mean, it's your your close family, yeah. your mom and dad, and sister, and then there's very other few. Yeah. And you'll learn that obviously with experience. If you're young, if you're young, if you're old, you already know. <laughs> yeah. Um, who are some leaders around the world that resonate with you, and perhaps the reason why? Leaders around the world. In any field. So it could be a leader, in any domain, whether it's you know. Leaders of a country, leaders of a city, leaders of a company, um, a grandfather, a father figure. And, and leaders, one hundred percent, my father, because that's yeah, over anybody, over any political figure or president or anything. It's definitely. I know it's a cliche thing to say, but definitely my father. Because and what, what elements? Hustle, which is where I got it from. Okay. Because he would hustle all day, every day. He would go out, and he would not only that, but he would wake my ass up. And be like, you're coming with me, and I t and then he and I wear my baggy jeans, you know, like my my Sean John when I was young. I told you, oh, the yeah, short fat kid, yeah. Sean John chain. Like, put that chain away. Pick up your pants. Put a belt on. Put some normal jeans on. Put a shirt and come with me. And he wake me up early, like on a Saturday. You know what I mean? Um, and it's not and it's not speaking about it. It's in action. That's like the best action. form of learning. That's right? it's pops, leading by example. Pops definitely taught me that. And then there's mom who taught me. Um, you know, religion and my Arabic language. Mm -hmm. So for me to live in a country right now in Dubai, which makes life much easier when you're able to speak Arabic, sure. when you're able to speak to the locals that live in this country, yes, it makes my life easier. Yes. And I also on Saturdays, every single Saturday, it would be, hey, you have, uh, what do you call it? Saturday school, learning religion and learning Arabic. Fantastic. Two hours each Excellent. on Saturdays. And I would go to school Monday through Friday. So I would have one day, you know, I'd finish maybe by three, but sometimes when I'm not there, I'm with my, my pops. So definitely the parents, again, it's cliche to say parents, but 100%. When you look back at it now. When I look back, yeah. Much appreciated. And mom's like, oh, you, you know, you, you'll thank me when you're older. Now, when I'm speaking Arabic to people, and I'm like, yeah, my Arabic's crap. They're like, no, your Arabic is on point. How do you, how's your Arabic so thank good? You, mama. And you've been living in America all your life. And I'm like, mama. Um, religion, again, there's religion, which teaches you not only about your religion, but teaches you morals, ethics, Yes. Um, which is what I also stand by. Yes. I try my best. Yes. What would you tell someone who's watching this who doesn't have the good fortune? Because not everyone has the good fortune of having a dad having parents, 100%. or a mom who lead by example or that nurture them. It's just the reality of the world. No, 100%. Uh, if you have it, great. But if you don't have it or if someone doesn't have it, how, what would you recommend someone do? I mean, again, you can take the victim mentality of, oh, I don't have it. Or you, or you find can, you somebody. you can choose to do something about it. So how would you go about 
find yeah. somebody you appreciate, somebody you look up to, somebody you you really find inspiring, mm -hmm. and and either follow them if you can through social media yeah. because you can't do that now, or hit them up, be like, hey, I want to come work for you for free, yeah, and just go and try to learn from and them, learn under and, them and learn under them, and then eventually you'll, you know, that's that's business speaking, but I mean, why not? Try to find 10 people that you that inspire you that you love to watch and, and hit every single one of them up and say i'll come work for you for free and, and amazing what you touched on about the fact that you can actually just go online yeah anyone that inspires you or that that leads by example in any aspect of your life whether it's you know their health whether it's their philosophy in life whether it's their parenting skill whether it's their business acumen there's so much free content online you can you can choose to surround yourself with 100%. these mentors and don't give up. If you if you hit up, message a mentor, somebody you, you find motivating, you love to watch, you, and you message them one time and they don't answer, or if you DM them one time. Try a different approach. Email them, yeah. LinkedIn them, Twitter them. Email them 10 times until they respond. Try everything. What's it gonna, Even better, is it gonna try kill everything. you? Is it gonna kill you? No. What's, what are you gonna put, is your ego, is it gonna stomp on your ego? No. Put your ego aside and try everything you can until something happens. Yeah. Don't stop. Can't stop, won't stop, honestly. Oh, did he? How do you separate yourself from your competition? Um, I don't see competition. Mm -hmm. I don't, there's enough fish in the sea. Mm -hmm. Good attitude. There is no competition, honestly. Has that always been your attitude or is it something you've developed? I never, no, I never, I've never felt like there's competition. So your mindset is not lack or we're fighting over this piece of the pie. Your There's mindset is so it's huge. Much. Everyone can just go in. Not only around the world, but I'm thinking about Dubai. Every single day, there's a new restaurant opening in Dubai. Yeah. Restaurant, hotel, um, event company. Like, there's so many Man, fish in the sea. I have friends that come to Dubai and they're telling me about places. I'm like, where Wait, is this? What? They're like, oh, Dubai. I'm like, I better spend a bit more time going out here. And Dubai is small. Yeah. I mean, you got, you got. You know, Jabal Ali, I'm talking about Dubai, just Dubai, not Abu Dhabi. You got from Jabal Ali all the way to um, Dera or Dubai, all that before you get to Sharjah. It's so but tiny, there's so much. but in there, there's, there's so, so much. much. And you're talking to me about competition, there's no competition. Yeah. But it's the mindset that's, that dictates how you behave and how. Exactly. Yeah. Again, it's all about your mindset. If you're going to sit there and say, oh, there's too much competition, I can't do this. No, you just, the thing is, you got to keep doing what you do and just have tunnel vision and don't stop. Mm -hmm. Consistency, repetition, creativity, mm -hmm. be unique, try to be unique. Just keep doing it until you find something that's unique and, and keep being consistent with it and eventually you'll get somewhere. Because you mentioned it, the moment where you were um, on the couch. Yeah. Someone is in this position. They're staying at a friend's couch no money, no resources, no connections, new into the field, literally every disadvantage possible that they can think of. What would be like a step-by-step -step guideline that you would give them to be able to get to a point of taking off, to hit that tipping point, to be able to grow within their domain? Let's say if they want to do what you're doing. Okay. What would be your step-by-step? -step? Hey, if this is your position, you have no money, you have no network, you have no resources, you're sleeping on your friend's couch, do you have a phone, first of all, I would ask. Do you have a phone? So first tip, do you have a phone? Yeah. Or can you get hand, your hands on a phone? Yeah. Borrow one from a friend? Yeah. And if you want to do it, what I'm doing is in social media management wise, mm -hmm. uh, which is very, very easy. Mm -hmm. So easy. Google it. Uh, it's, it's literally the easiest thing in the world if you really just Google it and figure out how to do it. Yes. Spend a day or two learning the techniques, the strategy, and then just continue consistency, obviously continue, continuously learn the tricks, the hacks, the this, the that, the, the, deep, the deeper strategies, and then you just do it. But if you, if you know that, if you have the know-how, then you just, again, you just go into the DMs, you go into the emails, you... It, so perhaps think of who you want to reach? Think of who you want to reach. Go up a list. And just attack, literally just attack. I mean, you, if you, in, in one week of sitting on this person's house, if you can message a hundred people a day, you know, you're going to have at least one person out of a hundred yes. respond. No matter how bad you are. No matter how horrible you are, yes. somebody's going to need your services. 
And obviously you're going to do it for super cheap because you are not experienced and this is going to be your first customer. That's how I did it. You're well, going to be willing to do it for free. Would you do it for free if I'm, you're starting off? If I'm starting off, do it for yeah. free. Yeah. Why not? Hey, I'll come and I'll do it. manage your social media for free. Or you could tell them, listen, I'll do it for you. I mean, you need to live somehow. You need yes. to get off this person's couch. Yes. Do it for you. If you don't like it, I'll give you money back. Yes. Very good. That's another I was option. going to say, I know someone who, uh, who, who makes websites, yeah. right? And one of the deals that, you know, to, to get off the ground, what he would do is he would look at companies that don't have a good website, reach out to them. Hey, I'll give you a great website. But instead of talking like everyone else who's pitching and trying to get their business of doing a website, let me do your website for you. And if at the end of it, you're happy with it, you pay me the fair rate. Yeah. There you go. Boom. And they start a winning business that way. There you go. It's just, again, trial and error. You go out, you see what works, you multiply. And especially in this day and age where you literally don't have to go up to a hundred people in person. So what? you don't have to travel. Waste time. You don't have to social message. media. You message. Easy. DMs. Instagram DMs. It. And don't reach out just saying hello. Don't just send your resumes cold. Add value. To Say how you can add value. Or better yet, you've got a skill and you feel that it's suited for, say, someone like Mo that you can actually show and he needs it. Then go do the work. Send him that work. Let him be impressed by that work. Will Smith does it a lot. He's, he's like boosted a few Instagram profile because these individuals who were talented, they've taken a video of his or footage of Sent it. it over to him. They did the work. They tagged into it, mm -hmm. and then he displayed it on his profile, which means... Yep. There you go. Crazy the stuff. The following goes up by 10, 20,000. Easy. Boom. Yeah. Are you a stubborn person? Very. I'm a Taurus. I'm a Taurus. My, my star sign is a Taurus, and Taurus, Taurus is definitely very stubborn. Yeah, extremely. And it's a, that's, a, that's a flaw. That's one of my flaws, is that I'm stubborn. Uh, it's gotten to me when I was young. It's gotten me in a lot of trouble. Like if you're, if you just stop being so hard-headed, you can get out of this. And I'm just like, nope. That's what I did. Or that's my word. Mm -hmm. And it just it gets you uh, gets you into trouble in the, in the business world and in, in just the normal world. Have you been, has it evolved? Have you been able to adjust that stubbornness to? I've learned to. I mean, it's so part it's of it. a weakness or have you been a, able to turn it into a strength? It's never a strength to be too stubborn. Okay. Because you don't want to be too stubborn. Like, and for example, with negotiations. Sure. If you're negotiating a price and then you... Oh, you lose the moment you're stubborn. If you're you stubborn, you're like, no. Uh, but like give and take. Okay, I'll give and take. Sure. But you have to, you have to give more than you take, especially when, especially when that client or this somebody will benefit you. You know, like having, being associated with this client will get you another client. Sure. So if you're going to be stubborn with this client, then it's You don't realize how much you're it. actually losing. Exactly. 100%. What I noticed about people who are, who are leaders and who achieve a lot and who do a lot of things is they're very, they put their foot down. So, mm -hmm. that, you know, they're very quick at making a decision. They'll analyze everything. They'll make a decision and they'll put their foot, foot down. So they're not like, either they don't have a foot here and a foot there. They'll make a decision. But at the same time, they're open-minded enough. Exactly. If you give them more information and they have to switch positions, they're not worried about that. So they could be in this position where they go, no, I believe X is the right answer. But with more information, with more experience, if now X is not the right answer, and Y is the answer, they're not worried about it. They're okay with going, Make okay, it happen. yeah, Y is now my new answer based on the new information. Exactly. So, you know, they're solid in the ground with their decision-making process, but still open-minded enough to go, if I and need to make I've a learned. change, well, that's what I've learned. It needs to happen. You need to, you need to be flexible, hundred percent. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Extrovert. An extrovert. If someone is an introvert, are they able to learn the skills? Or what suggestion do you have for someone who might use being introvert. introverted as an excuse for them why they're unable to meet new people? Or you just gotta. It's you can't do anything about. It. You can't just say, "Oh, I'm an introvert." You gotta go out there. And you got to try, 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 push, talk, trial and error, honestly. Yeah. You got to do what you have to do to get to your goal. You cannot, you cannot just sit there and be like, oh, I'm an introvert. I can't talk to people. No, you go out, you talk to people and then eventually you'll learn how to do it. Do you practice gratitude? That's a hundred percent. You have to be grateful about everything, everything you have. 
Like even when I was living on a couch, like, I was grateful mm -hmm. to even have the couch, even have friends that are going to take care of you and look out for you. So gratitude is definitely number one. Do you meditate? No, I don't. No, uh, I, I, I consider my, my patience my own way of, of meditating. Because mm -hmm. being patient is not an easy thing to do. Sure. When you're in a super shit situation and like horrible, and you're just thinking to yourself like, okay, if you're patient, everything will work out eventually. Mm -hmm. And everything so far has always worked out from being patient. But if you start going crazy and, and start doing things out of the ordinary. Walking and, around like a headless chicken. Then it just honestly it just it, it messes you up mm -hmm. mentally and physically and everything. You just you you need a you need to be. I've learned to just patience is key. Patience, patience and hustle. You got to be patient, but you got to on the daily basis, just yeah. nonstop keep it going. But just be patient because then things will things will come your way. It's having that balance of going out there every day, but remembering hey, what hustle, you have. You hustle, be appreciate what you have. And, and be good to people, man. Nice, yeah. Because it comes back. It doesn't cost anything to be good. Give a smile, give a hello, give, uh, just like we were saying earlier. You know, Positive energy. Give that vibe out because yeah. it comes right back. It's a vibration. You give it out, it comes right back. My two backbones, literally, it's like what keeps me standing is being patient and, and knowing that whatever you do will come back tenfold. And important to realize that patience is not something you can say, oh, but I'm not a patient person. Patience is something you can develop. Yeah, of course. So even if you're a person who says, I'm not a patient person, well, you can learn that skill if you want to. It's difficult to learn. It's not to easy to learn everything. You can't you know, go and be a basketball player overnight. I'm but not saying being patient develop. is, you can consciously, yeah, you can, you can learn. You can just be like, okay, I'm gonna just wait. I'm gonna not just sit back and wait and say I'm being patient. I'm gonna continue to hustle, mm -hmm. but you have to continue to hustle and wait patiently until something happens. Yeah. If you were hiring two individuals, equal in every aspect, uh, attitude or skill? Attitude or skill. Yeah. So one has the skill for the job you want, but a bad attitude. The other one doesn't have the skill, but has a great attitude. 100% attitude, because your good attitude will get you that, that skill. Mm -hmm. if the skill can be learned from having a good attitude. If you have a good attitude and you want to learn and you're you know, you're going to work every day because you want to go to work every day, that skill will come naturally. Mm -hmm. But having that skill but not wanting to work, no matter how smart you are, that that bad attitude is going to drag you down mm -hmm. and drag your other employees around you down as well. So bad for the environment, bad for the person, so 100% attitude. Because the skill can be learned. Sure. Attitude cannot be unlearned. <laughs> Worst advice you've received? Worst advice. Because everyone's asking, what's the best advice you've received? Yeah. Sure. And there are just some like some advice is just terrible. Like, I had a friend of mine. I never get stumped with questions, by the way. But your questions are stumping me. I have no idea. Yeah, about. and the, the intention is not. It's just I'd like you to. I just like people to to realize that every single one of us, right? That's we face the same things. You know, mm. you cut us, we bleed. We yeah. all have the same emotions. We all have. And I, this is the only thing I really want to convey. I mean, the whole idea of the show is to help people get inspired, get informed, and get going. And it's not by showing off the bling. I mean, yeah. we could have easily made this another one where you pull up with your Lamborghini or pull up with a Ferrari. They've seen it. And if you want Mo, Mo Money Official, check it out. It's all there to be inspired by the bling and all the, the lifestyle and everything. But, but I want people to be really, inspired. But that's not inspiring people, honestly. It, it's a driver for some people. I mean, for some people, yeah, but I don't find it as an inspiration. For somebody that doesn't have the Lamborghini or the Ferrari, they're kind of like, yo, piece of shit. Like, <laughs> I don't have this. What are you doing? You know, you show up, which I get sometimes. Sure, sure. But I'm in Dubai. That's what, you know, what people, they want to see the glitz. They want to see the glamour. Sure. So I get people what they, they want, you know. You have uh, some audience people are going to hate audience. it. Which is fine, but uh, yeah, sorry. Not really. Apologies. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. But so yeah, I think, so the question is, you know, people will say advice. best advice, but we've all been given advice. When if you have to actually think about it, you're going, that was just damn terrible advice, man. That was just terrible advice. Hmm. Like one advice that I remember I was given, I was like, stick to what you're good at. Like, no, I'm going to try different things because I still don't know what I'm good at. Well, I mean, I hate to say this, but my, I mean, my parent, my mom used to always tell me, 
to be a, you know, obviously every mom wants you to be a doctor or a lawyer. Me too. To this very day. You know, but. Mama, I'm a motivational speaker. Yeah. I coach CEOs, You're coaching world leaders. Doctors and lawyers and CEOs. Presidents are my clients. When are you going to go and get your master's? Are you kidding me right now? That's definitely one. Now she's not so much. Now she sees what's what's up. She's and now, given up. Now she. It's not that she's given up. Okay. She's proud. She's proud. No, Absolutely. she's proud. Like, oh wow, like I've seen what you've done. Okay, I'm um, sorry. I they, said that. They come around. They catch up. And the thing is, it's not necessarily bad advice given on purpose. It's the best advice they knew to. exactly at that moment for their time. Which was true. Correct for their time. We got to think about it when we compare it to say twenty or thirty years ago when it was time of our parents. Mm -hmm. That potentially was the case. Things have changed in the last 10 years now. Yeah, things have changed. Uh, worst drastic. advice, be a doctor. Be a doctor or a lawyer and go and study for eight years. Like in the eight years that I've, I would have just now finished college, yep. university, doctorates, whatever you Looking call for it. a job with Looking... student debt. Forget that. Zero life experience. Forget that, zero life, just books. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely the worst. Sorry, mama, if you're watching this. <laughs> He's making you proud though. He's making you proud. 500 years from now, how will they remember you? They'll say, Mo Jabri was... I want them to see that I was just a, a, a hustler. Damn, this guy went through so much. So a much legacy of a fighter? Of, yeah, just like can't stop, won't stop. Like literally will not stop until it's over. What's the most misunderstood concept in business from what you've seen? What do you feel people just don't get? Something that you see it just bright as daylight, like you're going, this is just common sense, and most people just don't get it. Uh, most most people don't get that you can't approach somebody and sell them direct to their face, because that's over. People directly selling, okay, yeah, you used to do it back in the day, you used to have door-to-door -door sales, and that's right, yeah. sell you stuff, yeah. hey, buy this. No, now, we've talked about this before, now it's about being likable. Yes. You gotta have somebody, you gotta, show the guy that you they're able to trust you mm -hmm. and then be able to sell them something without actually selling it to them directly you got to be able to to like let them want to buy give so much rather. value care be likable then so that when they need like, something you're top of mind exactly yeah and not directly sell maybe introduce talk this and that and then later on maybe not a week a day or a week but you can't you stay in touch with these people and then you end up selling it to them somehow, but not directly to their face. You gotta, it's not about, uh, You're playing not about long tricking game. them. It's long term, not yeah. short term. What's the most overlooked blessing in life? The fact that you're on this earth, it's one in what, how many billion, you know, that you're actually able to live. You're, you're the one sperm cell that actually reached oh. and you're actually be you're on this earth to live. That's yeah. breathing, living, um, but it's so easy to get caught up when life comes in the way. That's the thing. You just forget about it. You just, that's where gratitude comes in. You yeah. got to be grateful that you're living yeah. in the first place before complaining about where you're living or if you're living on somebody's couch or you got to be grateful that you're living and then be patient and hustle and know that things will work, get, work out to your advantage. What have you learned or experienced recently that you'd like to share as advice? No matter what happens. No matter what happens, you can't let it drag you down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's, you know, a death in the family, whether it's, you know, you went bankrupt, whether you, you lost your job, whatever it is, you just got to, you know, you know, you like that song. I don't know if you, uh, Chumpa Wump, old song. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You ain't never going to keep me down. You get knocked down, you got to get right back up and just keep on going. And you're going to get knocked down, down again, no matter what. Never like you're never going to just be on top of the world. Yeah. You're going to get knocked down every few days, every few weeks, every few months. You're going to get... That's like a stock chart. Even if it's going up, you're going to have that thing of going you're up. You're going to get hit in the face so many times in life. And if you just let it knock you out, that's your fault. You're going to knock out and you're done. Progress or perfection? Progress. Progress equals perfection. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the more you go, the more you progress, the way you lead to perfection. And you'll never get actually, you'll never be perfect. There's no such thing as perfection. There's always progress over perfection. 100%. There's no such thing as perfect. That's true. 100%. So as long as you're progressing, 
that's it because you're on your way to perfection even though perfection you'll never get there that's right so that as long as you're progressing you're moving forward you're moving forward cool. Mo, I really appreciate you making the time. My Thank God. you very much. My man. I really appreciate it. Um, is there anything that, what are you focusing on now? What do you care about that you'd like to share with the audience? Um, you know, if they want to follow you, if they want to know what you're doing, yeah. uh, to keep up to date with your things, feel free. This is where, this is where you I mean, we'll, we talked about, about it all. We talked about it all. So uh, obviously, you know, my, my, uh, my company, Mo Money Management, anybody needs social media management, Holler at me, Mo Just, Money official on Instagram, Mo Money on YouTube. Um, you know, social media management, production-wise. If you see the content on my uh, on my social media, you'll see the content that I create. Not not too bad at that. I'm also I don't know if I know I didn't mention this. I actually uh, I'm partners with um, His Highness uh, Sheikh Sultan bin Abdullah Al Qasimi. So I work with a um, company that you know he owns and he's formed in Dubai, which uh, partners with companies either in the UAE or international companies that want to come and expand in the UAE. So anybody that's looking to expand their business in the UAE or coming out from, from outside, um, obviously it goes through you know, a vetting process and see if they're eligible to be able to partner with uh, His Highness's office. And they help basically expand, they, they partner with them and then they open the doors for them. Okay. They open the doors for them, the business development, they connect them with Decision makers, because if somebody comes and opens a business in, in Dubai, you're going to need to hire staff and office space and this and that. Like, oh, sure. much, you're going to end up spending so much money, whether uh, rather than you know partnering with the sheikh's office, then you come in, you partner with us. Knowledge, Obviously, experience. And knowledge, stuff. experience, and instead of going and, and getting salesmen to go and try to meet different sales managers and executives, no, we connect you directly to CEOs, decision makers, owners. Mo has shared plenty with us. I hope you got a lot of gems from what he shared. I hope you got gems from the conversation. In the words of Bruce Lee, take what you find useful, discard what you find useless, and add something that is of your own. Mo, thank Cheer you for up. joining us. My guy. I appreciate it. Thanks for having truly, me. Truly, genuinely, uh, honestly, when I said about likability, you're truly up there. When I think of someone that's likable, my guy, this man comes to it. Make sure you follow him on his socials. My Make man. sure you. Um, you see what he's up to. Uh, he's been honest. He's been candid. Uh, I believe that he's shared with you things that he hasn't shared before in other interviews. And sure. I hope that you found that to be useful. The show's entire purpose is to help you get inspired, get informed and get going. I hope that we were able to do this for you on this episode. Until the next episode, I'm Kevin Abdurrahman and this is How Do They Do It? Thank you, bro. I really guy, appreciate my it. My guy, my guy. What are How we going to do? do? We're going to do both. <laughs> Progress, right? Perfection. Right. Yes, sir.